Welcome to another episode of the Bandage Podcast, a weekly wrap-up of the most trending healthcare news. Each week, join me and my co-host Alex Ross as we'll discuss the latest in healthcare, health IT, and compliance. In this week's episode, we discuss a new smartwatch feature, a better EHR system, improving healthy eating habits in kids, and how sleep affects asthma. Let's wrap things up. This is episode 33 for the week of May 18th. I'm Matt Moneypenny. And I'm Alex Ross. Before we get started, our diagnosis code of the week is V00.151 fall from Healy's. You know, interestingly enough, Matt. Has this happened uh, to you? I've, this has actually happened to me, yeah. Oh. Um, I don't know if you remember the Healy craze. Um, I'm as surprised as you are that there is a specific diagnosis code just for, you know, a fall wearing mm-hmm. Heelys specifically. Um, but I was able to secure a pair of hand me down Heelys from one of my friends who had two. And, uh, you know, as someone who's relatively good at roller skating, I took to them very naturally mm-hmm. and I wore them everywhere, um, including to the mall, uh, which was a lot of fun because, you know, malls, they have those smooth, like, hard uh almost like tile floors but they're smooth you know what i mean kind of like how schools have except the school band of linoleum uh, yep Uh uh-huh yeah it's not linoleum (laughs) it's it's uh a rock type substance oh yeah as opposed to like a a vinyl type substance but it it was perfectly smooth it was great so i'm skating around here in the jc pennies having so much fun um and i thought i could do some tricks like all of the cool skaters out there because now I'm a skater, you know? Right. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Don't try to jump the escalator as your first Healy trick. Okay? Don't don't go down I'm the escalator. I'm confused why you said that there work. was a Healy craze. The Healy craze <laughs> hasn't died, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing mine right now. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and roll out of the studio because I'm blocking out the haters. <laughs> exactly yeah but you know here's basically what happened i made the jump but when i landed uh the wheel got caught on the lip of the escalator Mm -hmm. and the wheel just popped right out of the shoes and the shoes hit the ground and gained traction suddenly uh, and i did a nice face plant Ah. so if you ever uh wondered what happened to my nose it was the heelys that did it and with that let's get into the news (laughs) First up, we have an Apple a day keeps the panic attack away. The next generation Apple Watch will reportedly include mental health monitoring capabilities, including the ability to warn of an oncoming panic attack. The information of the features came from tech analyst and well-known leaker John Prosser in an appearance on the Geared Up podcast. Rumors have claimed that the next watch will include a blood oxygen sensor, which Prosser said Apple will use for these mental health features. The sensor will gather information to determine if its wearer is hyperventilating. This will allow the device to issue a warning when a panic attack is coming, which will be especially useful if the wearer is driving. In this case, the watch would ask the driver to pull over and offer breathing techniques. What an interesting concept. Yeah. Um, I have only had one panic attack in my life, and and I gotta say it was terrifying and i'm thankful that i don't experience them much more often Mm -hmm. i will say though that based on that experience i feel like someone telling me hey you're about to have a panic attack would have made it so much worse you think so you'd be like yes because you don't believe them you're like hey i don't think so you're full of it (laughs) no no it's not that i don't believe them because obviously if it's working based on a hyperventilating like you can already Mm -hmm. sort of feel it like something's off but you're not sure what well, but like a lot of times, I, people I just who feel have like frequent panic attacks, they have like grounding techniques where they just like have to like sit down or just like take a second, take a moment and just kind of center themselves. So I think that's kind of helpful for the people who have a lot of panic attacks and are like right. consistent with anxiety and things like that. Um, but if it's like a one off panic attack for someone like you, it might not be that helpful. But. It still could be helpful as well because you probably almost almost already have an Apple Watch anyways. So, I mean, it, it probably feature. would be more helpful if I didn't experience them often, right? Right, yeah. Because then it could potentially detect something that I'm not really 
clued into what's going on. Right. And as long um, as you know that that feature exists, then you'd be like, okay, uh, this is this is happening. So I need to calm down. Or <laughs> I could see like like you were saying, where if it's a surprise and you don't know that this feature exists, you're like, okay, well, I'm just in a panic even more now because now my watch is apparently telling the future. So <laughs> yeah, right. And and I'm not sure what's going on, and I don't know what to do. And right, so yeah, it it could go either way, and and I hope it is one of those features that you can choose whether or not you want to use it. Yeah. The real question, though, is does Apple track this information, and do they keep it somewhere? Yeah, and I'm not sure. uh, you know, Probably. how securely <laughs> is it going to be stored? All of this information, right. you know, eventually all these tech companies are just going to own us. Yeah. <laughs> right, because that's the other half of the conversation. As these tech companies venture more into the medical space, how are we going to make sure that this is going to remain secured? Yeah. I mean, because it, it basically is medical testing information, right? Yep. It's it's your test results. Yeah, who knows? We'll see. Only time will tell. Next up, you need this kind of synergy at your practice. Digital health tech company Dr. Chrono has partnered with EHR Synergy to improve the medical charting process for physicians. Dr. Chrono's open platform powers electronic health record solutions. Through its integration with EHR Synergy, physicians can use the new augmented intelligence engine to document patient encounters. It uses AI to learn the provider's unique thinking styles and presents them with the most likely diagnosis and treatments based on the patient's reason for visit. With each encounter, the system learns more about the providers and refines recommendations by reordering and color coding elements. It's the first system of its kind to take customer data and turn it into structured data, freeing up time from manual charting so physicians can spend more time with patients. Kind of sounds like you've got yourself a robot understudy who eventually can do the diagnosis for you. What do you think? (laughs) Yeah, AI (laughs) is kind of heading in that direction. Um... So any kind of boost with EHRs or any kind of area with that, like medical billing and diagnosis and just helping doctors out in terms of uh, keeping track of everything that they have to deal with uh, is good, especially considering EHRs right now have terrible UIs and known across the industry to be a little bit more more clunky and hurt doctors more so than help them. So um, anything that can save them time is great, in my opinion. Right. It... Going off of that point you've made, these types of solution almost feel like uh, a band-aid of sorts. Yeah. Like your EHR is terrible and you don't want to work within it. So we'll just make it so you don't actually have to go into it instead of fixing the issue with the EHR right. that makes you not want to use it. Yep. Now, yep. obviously, this is a partnership between two different companies. So it's up to, to, for example, in this case, EHR Synergy to fix the issue, whereas it's Dr. Chrono that's creating this tool that's integrating right yep so you know maybe they're working on it hopefully they are and uh, as we get used to this this new electronic age uh, we'll grow into it agreed next up munching with mochi a tech company based at carnegie mellon university developed the app called little mochi to help kids have better diets the ai based virtual pet encourages children to form positive eating habits in a fun way With the app, children adopt and name a computerized pet. When the kids eat, they feed their pet at the same time by snapping pictures of what's on their plate. Three times a day, the child is reminded to feed Little Mochi. When kids eat healthy foods, they receive more points, which can be cashed for stickers to decorate their pet's home. A balanced diet that includes all food groups helps the animal become stronger, smarter, cuter, and healthier. When Little Mochi is lacking a certain food group, it will ask for those foods specifically. There are also bonus prizes for trying new healthy foods out. Okay, this is really cool. But the yeah, question it's like becomes, a Tamagotchi. <laughs> is this on their parents' device? or? Well, a lot of kids like have their own devices, below? whether it's like a I tablet know. or some sort of smartphone yeah. that's old or something like that. So I guess uh, my age is showing because I yeah. didn't get a cell phone until i was a little too old for something like this but the concept is really cool yeah and i almost gamifying diets which is like super creative um especially for children because like with adults you can gamify it but at the end of the day if if the adult wants pizza they're gonna eat pizza 
Whereas with right. kids, it's like, okay, now they're, you're encouraging them and giving them positive feedback to eat healthy. So they're going to go to their parents and say, mom, I'm going to eat broccoli today. <laughs> I need to feed my mochi pet. Okay. My, my mochi needs vegetables. Uh, can I take a picture of your vegetables? No, thanks. I don't want to eat them. <laughs> yeah, right. They just start <laughs> scamming. They just start taking pictures of frozen bags of vegetables. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or they go on Google. They search up broccoli and take a picture of their screen. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if there's like a fail safe to like combat like scamming little mochi food. Right. right. <laughs> I'm sure they're not that worried about it because we're dealing with kids, but I could see kids doing. Do you remember Scanners Commanders? Yes. Isn't that oh, the food goodness. where you like take a picture and they like level up or something? No, you you scan the barcode yeah. and it would like unlock new creatures and mm-hmm. something like that. It was such a cool concept. For some reason, I'm imagining that in this yeah, case. Yeah, it's like it's a like, mix of that ah, and scan the Tamagotchi. broccoli. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah tamagotchi has kind of a weird space now because it can exist as an app within a phone as opposed to a standalone device does it still but exist? so much of oh yeah it definitely still exists <laughs> but so much of like the appeal of it for middle schoolers when i was in school <laughs> was having those big keychains just jingling around everywhere yeah right and you know the status that came with it <laughs> yeah the status <laughs> The Tamagotchi superiorists. <laughs> right. I could never keep one of those things alive. But fun fact while we're on the, the topic, um, the, the word Tamagotchi sounds very similar to the Japanese word Tomodachi, which means friend. Ah, uh-huh. ah. Uh-huh. Next up, catch some Z's so you don't wheeze. The American College of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology revealed that inadequate sleep can negatively impact adults with asthma. Compared to normal sleepers, the short sleepers had a greater likelihood of an asthma attack, dry cough, an overnight hospitalization, and had more frequent general health care use. They also had significantly worse health-related quality of life. This includes the amount of days with poor physical and mental health and inactive days due to poor health. Long sleepers also had higher odds for activity limitations due to wheezing. This study adds evidence that patients should discuss sleep issues with their allergist. Doing this could help determine if they need to change their asthma plan to achieve adequate sleep as a component of overall good asthma management. It also warns that consequences can be expected when sleep patterns are chronically inadequate. Well, I guess I know what's wrong with me now. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this is one of those studies where it's like, it makes complete sense. And it's like, oh, right. duh. Obviously, if you don't sleep, you don't feel good. And if you have asthma, you're not going to feel good at all. And you're going to have an asthma attack because your immune system is a little bit less active when you're sleeping or like tired. So it's like one of those where it's super obvious, but they still need to do the study to prove it. <laughs> right, right. And now that we have that proof, it's like, oh, well, duh. It's like, oh, okay. yeah, of course, duh. And it, it does, however bring up kind of an interesting point that maybe people aren't considering and that is that an allergist has an interest in your sleep schedule right whereas prior you probably wouldn't even bring that up you wouldn't mention it to them because sleep is not their department their department is allergies or asthma right so i think that's interesting i'm I'm glad that we have that option kind of like hey by the way you can discuss sleep with your allergist that's a thing uh and it may help yeah while they're injecting you with different allergens to see how your body reacts we might as well ask you about sleep as well yeah maybe they could uh test you for sleep allergy (laughs) right exactly and with that let's go into our next segment b-r-e-a-c-h breach patrol it's a breach all of the latest cybersecurity breaches Welcome to Breach Patrol, where we talk about all of the latest breaches all across the world. First up, we have looking for a date could cost you your data. The personal details of over 3.5 million users on the Moby Friends dating app are available for download on online hacking forums. This data was obtained in a breach from January 2019 and was originally up for sale on a hacking forum, but is now fully accessible to anyone. The data doesn't contain any private messages or images, but does include sensitive details such as passwords, email addresses, phone numbers, usernames, genders, 
birth date, and app activity. The company failed to inform customers of the incident and no official statement has been released. Users should change their passwords to their Moby Friends account and any other account that shares the same credentials. They should also enable two-factor authentication if possible. That's a lot of information that's primed for a phishing attack, especially with it being just accessible to anyone who wants to potentially use it. Yeah, agreed. And also the fact that the company, this is a great example of what not to do when uh, you get breached. And you need, if you get breached and a lot of customers are affected um, <laughs> and it reaches headlines before it reaches the like the personal emails of those affected, then you failed. So um, maybe, you know, you <laughs> It's just like there's been a huge dating app trend. Like everywhere, every, you look, you, you pick up your phone. There's a million dating apps now. Um, so maybe you shouldn't have picked one that was a little bit generic. You know, I don't even know what Moby. What is this? Moby Friends? Yeah, I don't know what that I is. I personally <laughs> haven't heard of it either. Um, <laughs> it it is a little odd the response to this particular breach that they're just kind of shh, be quiet. Maybe it'll Roll. go away. Yeah, like, that's right. an interesting choice. Let's see if it plays out for them. Probably not. <laughs> no. And, and I think it'll hurt business pretty badly for him. Next up, Karma's a breach. The database for We Leak Data, a hacker forum and data breach marketplace, is being sold on the dark web. It exposes private conversations of hackers who use the site. We Leak Data was primarily focused on discussing, trading, and selling databases stolen during breaches that are used for credential stuffing attacks. The leaked information is a concern for those who use the site because law enforcement can use the data to track down threat actors and correlate them to other attacks. This is a short story, but it's pretty dense with information here to break right. it down. So there are some data. hackers that are bad. Yeah, there are some form. hackers that are good. <laughs> yeah, we leak data is a hacker form marketplace. That's being sold on the dark web. So if you want to buy it, you know, feel free, I guess. Um, no, the database from it is being sold. Oh. oh Not the actual oh, site. Wait, 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 wait. Right? We leaked data. Oh, yeah, the database. Was hacked. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. And that's where the, the karma. And it exposes comes private in. conversations of hackers who use the site. <laughs> right. So then so, is it like a fake site, too? <laughs> is it like one of those like honeypots where it's like, yo, we're just a form. Come out, come make a community, you know, hackers. Come on in. Let's have a good time. Let's talk about some crazy stuff. I would guess stuff. no. It, it, it just sounds and like their security. It. Yeah, it just sounds like their security was pretty bad. And uh, someone was like, yeah, this could be fun. Right. Hacking the hackers. Uh, and so they did. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Perfect. maybe that that has a pretty good potential for blackmail. But it, it appears the information itself has been leaked. So yeah, right. probably not useful anymore. But. Maybe it will lead to some more solved breach cases uh, because we'll have some more data to, to look at and compare when trying to figure out how some of these breaches happened and what caused them, who did them. Yeah, right. Agreed. And that's it for this week's wrap up of your weekly healthcare news. I'm Alex Ross. And I'm Matt Moneypenny. And we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of The Bandage. This week's episode was written and produced by eTactics. eTactics is a leading revenue cycle solutions organization committed to providing innovative, web-based solutions that improve our clients' cash management and customer relationships. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.